What's going on everybody? John Eric Poli here with my MMA News and today we're talking a little bit about UFC Vegas 28. Of course that fight card just took place over the weekend. Today's guest is Claudio Puevas. He defeated Jordan Levitt by unanimous decision. Those two gentlemen of course kicked off things uh, for the fight night, first fight of the night. Let's bring Claudio in here. Claudio, how you doing my man? Thank you so much for being here. I know you had a Crazy flight getting into Peru after your uh, victory. So you're v being very gracious with your time to everybody today. And we appreciate that. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it was a long flight. Everything, things got delayed. But, well, I'm home, so that's a good thing. Uh, country's not too good right now. We're going over presidential elections. Like, we, pres like the pres president gets elected today. <laughs> so things are pretty, pretty crazy right now. But no worries. Let's just hope for the best. And, um, yeah, have a good time here for my, for my vacation. Yeah, I bet it's definitely a crazy time as you're flying back at home. You have election day going on down there, a lot going on. And, of course, a lot going on in the fight game as well. And before we actually get into anything uh, with your fight from over the weekend, I do want to touch base on a couple of things, one of which was your layoff. You were out for almost two years. So this fight for you was, again, like I said, your first fight in a meaningful period of time, just... What was this experience like in the lead up to this fight that you've been off for a little bit? Well, I I fought last in September 2019. So after that, after a couple of months, COVID hit, and um, when that happened, they uh, closed the borders here in Peru. So I couldn't. I basically couldn't leave the country. That was the main reason uh, of my layoff. I wasn't injured. I was. I was fine. I was at, at home, mostly at home here in Peru. Uh, I couldn't, we couldn't leave the apartment. I couldn't, I didn't leave my apartment for three months at the beginning of the pandemic. Then we started doing like clan, clandestine trainings. Like I put some mats in my house and got a, brought like a training partner. And that's how we were training basically for the next three months. So that was like six months into the pandemic. And then the, the, there were started some news that the country was going to open, but only in December. And, uh, well, I basically lost, like, a whole year there. That was from September to September. That was a whole year. Uh, then, yeah, I sold my car, and I was like, I'm going to move to Florida. Like, I need to, I need to train. I need to, to have a hard camp. I, I, can, I can't keep uh, not fighting, like, um, consistently and, and not being well-trained. So, yeah, I, I made a move, and I think it was uh, the right choice. And, of course, that move was to Sanford MMA, great camp down there in South Florida. Uh, just tell everybody a little bit about being down there and training, because this was your first uh, fight camp down there. So just tell everybody a little bit about camp and how you've enjoyed the experience of being down there in South Florida getting working. It's amazing, man. The, the atmosphere in that gym, the facility is beautiful. The coaching is great. Uh, High-level partners, people, it's like every day they're like, uh, there's like not such thing, uh, not uh, such thing as um, people like skipping too many practices. You know, like there's always people there. You have always a lot of like partners to train. That's something I enjoy a lot. That's not the case here. Like we have a lot of talent here, but maybe there's a little more discipline in like you, you like uh, fighters need a little more discipline here. But but you know that's something I don't have. I, don't, I shouldn't have to worry about. And that's something I enjoy a lot of Florida, of Sanford. And I enjoy a lot the weather in Florida. If I show you right now my window, you'll see why, why the weather is not too good here. See, I say a lot of people love that weather down there in South Florida. And I do want to get into one more thing about training down there before we get into the fight. Uh, we've seen fighters in the past. So will talk about how... You know, they're, they're excited about changing their gyms. They really enjoy it. But the thing then is when you talk to them after that first camp, when you get into second, third, fourth camps, they just talk about how they're just getting so much better every single day that they're in their their, their new gym. Do you feel that you're going to have that same type of transition down there? That, like, you, it's just getting started. We're, we're, we're only going to get better as time goes on here. Man, I just finished my first whole camp with a strength and conditioning program, like with a full program, like a three months. Like I've never done that before. I did like the longest camp I've done before. I had a smooth, uh, a smooth weight cut. Um, but it's definitely getting better. Like it's definitely going to get better every time. I didn't want it. I didn't want my camp to finish when it, when it was uh, about to be done. My trainers, heard, my trainers had to tell me, 
okay, no more training today, no more training today. Like I, I still wanted to go like to every practice and I had already, I already needed to like down, like uh, step it down a little bit on the training because I was fighting next week. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to my next one and to the next one, to the next one. I'm having a good time over there, like, learning, getting better, eating the good food. Like, you know, everything that being a professional fighter and an athlete involves. I bet that you're excited and I can see why. A lot, and again, a lot of fighters too that train down there, nothing but positive things, positive things to say about that gym. And now, Quadi, let's start getting into this fight now here a little bit. I do want to break it down, I guess, round by round. We'll start with that opening round. Very close round. A lot of people thought that uh, Jordan had won that round. Just what was your thoughts on the round? And then when you went to your corner afterwards, were you guys... We get, did you guys think you were down 0-1 after that opening frame? Yeah, uh, I think I think he won the round. To be fair, I think he won it, not by much, slightly, but he won the round. He had other. I don't remember if I took him down at the end of that round. Did I? Oh, the, yeah, but he got more control. He got like two takedowns in that first round. He got a little more control of me against the cage. So yeah, he won the round, but. I did the adjustment. I did the adjustment on, on, on that on that rest I heard my corner. And I felt, because, you know, sometimes uh, you have a strategy walking into the fight, but you have to adjust sometimes because you, um, I was fighting him, so I felt what he felt like in the, in the grappling exchanges. And I was like, I can, in my mind, like, I was like, I can beat this guy. Like, I can, I can beat him in, in the grappling. Like, I don't feel he's going he's gonna to beat me in the, in the positions. So yeah, I just I just went for that. I trusted my instinct, my instinct, and uh, I was like, I'm gonna take him down, and I'm gonna make him work. He's not gonna be able to do much from bottom. He was very dangerous, but uh, yeah, I think I did enough. I did enough. Uh, I like to like put a little more hurt, but it's fine. You know, sometimes uh, you have to be content with what with what you get. And now I do want to touch on one of the things you just brought up there, how you were able to make the adjustments. Talk about then that second round, because that second round you looked fantastic and you really swung the momentum right into your favor. And it was pretty much your fight the whole rest of the way on out there. So just what was that adjustment that you were able to make in between the opening round and the second round? Uh, the confidence. The, my, the confidence uh, grew in my head. So I knew going in, I wanted to feel like, once, like, uh, you know, there's a lot of, like, speculation before the fights, and there was, like, a lot of speculation on, on our grappling exchanges. I was, like, I was wondering how strong he felt, like, uh, how strong he was going to feel. Like, I, I wanted to, like, test that. And uh, when, when we were grappling, he, yeah, he felt good. He's dangerous. Like, I felt that. But I felt like I, I, I knew I could still uh, work him in that aspect after the first round. So I was, like, yeah, I'm going to go out and, 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 and switch the strategy a little bit because my strategy was to move, but... But when he was taking me down, I was just trying to kick out and like and uh, go back to standing and take my distance. But he was like following up pretty good with the takedowns. Like he was like uh, hanging onto my legs. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna wrestle him too. I'm just gonna wrestle him, and that's where I started beating him. Let's talk now too about this last round here. So you said you gained the confidence and it showed in that second round. Obviously, it's still one-one on the judges' scorecards going in the final round. You're, you were saying how confident were. Did you have full faith you were going to go out there in that third round and you were going to do exactly what you did and secure the victory there? Or what was ex the exact approach in between the second and third rounds as you went out there for that final round? Yes. Uh, no. After the, after the second round, I knew he was tired. My corner told me he's at 20%. He has only 20% left. In my mind, I had I was only at 40% like going up, not, not going down, like 40% going up. I uh, had like a, still a lot to 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 give in that fight, and um, I was like, okay, I only gotta do, I only have to do the same one more round. I'm gonna try to put a little more ground bond, a little more, if I can. Like, um, I I still save myself a little bit because um, I knew he was dangerous, so there was some positions I didn't want to like take that I knew I could, but uh, you know, he was like rolling for leg locks and stuff, and I I wanted to like secure the fight. So, yeah, I just, just took the, the, the safe way. And now I do want to touch on your nationality. Of course, you mentioned, uh, we said right in the beginning there, that you're from Peru. You are, I believe, you said before we started the interview, you're the only fighter from Peru on the UFC roster. So just what does that mean to you that you're the only fighter in the UFC that's from Peru and that you get to rep your country in that way? 
um, I think it like uh, it speaks very highly about myself, like uh, about the effort, the kind of effort and dreams that I have to like make it to the UFC from a from a country that's not very big and to mix martial arts. You know, it's never easy. It's not like you have all these crazy gyms in every state available for you to to get into the big leagues and you have all the contacts. Like, no, it was not like that for me. It was not like that. It was very, very tough, uh, up and coming. We were we had to like bring fighters, flu fighters like from other countries to to get fights for, for me, like my promoters before, my old coaches. We did a, we did a lot of work to get to the point where I'm at right now. I'm very thankful with everybody that has contributed 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 into my career. I'm I'm really I'm really happy about that. But uh, I wish and I hope more fighters from from here get to the UFC. I'm not saying I want to be the only one because that's not the case, man. We had a couple of uh, fighters a couple uh, like two or three years ago from Peru. They all got cut. And uh, I hope some of them can make their way back up or, or we get some new blood. That would be awesome too. Um, yeah, and things are going to change. Latin America is growing. I hope I can, I can do my part to help uh, Peruvian MMA a little, put, put them a little more into the scene. That's what I would like. And uh, my dream of having a UFC card in Peru, that would be, that would be big. That's, that would be sick. That would be like one of my dreams, having a UFC Peru card. Hey, that would be awesome to see that. And it, that's such a great thing that the UFC does travel around and they go to other people's countries. And I know we saw with uh, Santiago Ponzinibbio down in Argentina was crazy. Of course, whenever they go over to, to Europe, to Sweden and stuff, and yet like Alexander Gusterson and people like that on the cards, it's always such a great, incredible experience to see all those fans out there and, and getting to see their fighters uh, be represented like that in, in such a way. It's a really great thing to see. And now, Claudio, as we wrap things up here, I have to ask you, you know, what's next? We have a lot of positives going on here. You're back in the back in the UFC now that coronavirus is over with here. You could start moving your career along. Of course, we talked about training down in South Florida there at Sanford MMA and how happy you are. A lot of positives going on here. I imagine you want to keep the momentum rolling. So what is next for you? Oh, man, I just got to Peru, and it's like going back into the time with the COVID thing. Every, double mask man double mask everywhere i'm like what, what is this i wasn't even wearing a mask anymore like i have forgotten about that <laughs> but well especially in south florida like masks are not like a thing anymore and covid like I, I already got my shot as well so i'm like i'm i'm confident against this but you know whatever uh my next move yeah just like i'm gonna have a little vacation here in south and lima and uh i'll be back in july in south florida start my start training again uh and then get a fight I don't know. I don't know who's gonna be. Uh, I, don't, I don't have nobody in mind. But um, yeah, I just want to enjoy my time training, and uh, and I hope uh, they give me a, a good fight. And yeah, I'll train for that, have fun, and do do my thing again. Well, we'll be looking forward to seeing the next time you steps uh, foot inside of the octagon. Before you roll out, though, uh, tell everybody where they can find you out on social media. If you have any management or sponsors that you need to plug, please feel free to do so. Yeah, it's just my name, Claudio, in, on Instagram, Claudio underscore Puelis. <laughs> That's it. You'll see the, the blue check in there. All right. Thank you so much again for all the time here today. Congratulations on the victory. We're looking forward to seeing your next move, whatever that may be, and glad to see things are working out for you down there in South Florida. And for everybody that's out there watching this interview, if you haven't done so yet, please go to the bottom, hit the subscribe button. I appreciate it whenever someone subscribes to this channel. And it helps you guys, too, to see more of the interviews that I'm doing with a lot of these fighters. And uh, I also have to plug the website that I work with, My MMA News. Great site, great people, putting out a lot of great work. So make sure you're going to our website to see all of that. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you go to our social media accounts and give us a like and a follow on there as well. We'll see you later, everybody.